Hey guys, Whitney here. You know, getting a diagnosis of celiac disease or gluten sensitivity and being told that you need to eliminate gluten from your life forever, well, that can be a pretty big shock. And let's face it, our relationship with food goes way beyond simple nourishment. Food's a form of self-expression, you know? It can ground us in our culture. It is a way of expressing our love to family and friends. And it can be a pretty significant part of our identity. So just the idea of making major changes to our diet that are permanent can threaten that identity and even threaten our sense of place in the world. That might sound silly to some people, but having to give up gluten is often experienced as a deep loss. And like any loss, um, that's accompanied by a particular grieving process or what I like to call a coping cycle. You've probably heard about the stages of grief, and the most well-known model includes the stages of denial, anger, depression, bargaining, and then acceptance. But there's another model based on the work of Dr. Colin Murray Parks, and it outlines a cycle that includes four stages. And those stages are numbness, a yearning for a previous life, disorganization and despair, and then finally, reorganization. Now, according to Dr. Parks, once a person gets out of stage one, which is numbness, they don't return to that stage. But you can cycle back and forth between yearning and disorganization several times before you ever make it to stage four, which is reorganization. The point here is that it's not a linear process. This is a cyclical process. So you might be asking yourself, okay, Whitney, where the hell are you going with all this? What my clients struggle with most is not the logistics of being gluten-free, like, you know, cooking and shopping and dining out, but it's the emotional roller coaster that often goes along with their new way of life. And I find Dr. Park's four-stage cycle to be super relevant to what my clients are going through and very helpful in coaching them through the most difficult aspects of that cycle. Okay, so let's get into it. Stage one is called numbness. And this is the stage that happens immediately after you receive your diagnosis. Now, this stage can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. In its simplest form, numbness is kind of like a state of shock. It's your psyche's way of protecting you from the overwhelming nature of what you've just experienced or what you've just heard. Now, having said that, there are other cultural influences that can play a part in how you experience the numbness stage. For instance, if you've been raised in a culture where you've internalized a belief that you should suffer in silence or that you should have the ability to just take things in stride and, you know, just get over it. You may find yourself spending a little bit more time in the numbness stage being stuck. And certainly any cultural stigmas that go along with your diagnosis or with adhering to a gluten-free diet, those can serve to prolong this numbness stage for you. Okay, so what are some of the signs of the numbness stage? Well, first off, simply signs of basic shock, right? An inability to think clearly, being at a loss for words, feeling disconnected or disassociated or apathetic, and even feelings of disorientation or extreme and sudden fatigue. All of these things can be signs of this numbness stage. There are some other characteristics of the numbness stage that kind of go along with those cultural influences I was talking about. And that can look like the impulse to repress information, right? Um, not tell anyone about your diagnosis, um, just kind of stuff it down, pretend that it didn't happen, and act as if everything is, you know, business as usual. Now, this can be kind of short-lived. It might be more like the Scarlett O'Hara syndrome, right? Like, oh, I'm not going to think about that today. I'm going to think about it tomorrow. And you just push it to the side. There's also what I think of as the last hurrah mentality. That usually looks like uh, someone saying, you know, I'm not going to deal with this until Monday or until the first of the month. So that's the date at which I'll get serious and I'll start to really, you know, think about this issue and make changes until then. I'm going to live my life to the fullest and do everything that I know that I'm going to miss later. You know, that's the last hurrah syndrome. There's no right or wrong way to experience numbness. 
and you don't get points for you know spending the shortest amount of time in that stage as possible. The important thing to remember is that this stage doesn't last long and that once you leave this stage, you're not going to cycle back to it. So how can you support someone in this stage? Well, it boils down to a few things. Have compassion, be patient, and be ready to listen. This isn't the time to barrage someone with a bunch of research or all of your well-intentioned opinions or ideas. And don't try and jump in and fix things. A person in the numbness stage already is in a state of information overload. That's why they've gone numb. They need space to breathe and they need time to acclimate to the idea of what's ahead of them. And if you're watching this and you're in the numbness stage right now, be kind to yourself. Ask for space, ask for hugs, ask for a shoulder to lean on or a shoulder to cry on. Let your friends and family know as lovingly as you can that you're not ready for any advice right now and you're really not ready for questions. Give yourself permission to be right where you are until this stage naturally passes, because it will. Now, I've created a free resource for you guys. Uh, it's called The Coping Cycle Living with a Gluten-Related Disorder. So just go to my bio link, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, click on the link below and download that free PDF for yourself or, or maybe someone you love who you know is dealing with this. The resource will outline each stage and also give folks some pointers and guidance on how to go through this cycle with greater ease and from a place of strength and power. All right, take care of yourself guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.